What's going on, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Other Side of the Firewall, where we discuss the latest and greatest cybersecurity news. I'm going to get through it, <laughs> as well as we highlight those movers and shakers and glass ceiling breakers. Uh, my name is Ryan Williams, and as always, I'm joined by Shannon Tynes. What's up? What's up? And LeVon Maynard. What up? All right. Make sure you listen to Monday's episode where I did that actual intro right. Um, <laughs> today's episode uh, will be also very exciting. Uh, make sure you stay tuned throughout the week. Uh, so like I said, on Monday, we had a, a pretty good discussion uh, considering uh, or concerning a woman of color going back to her hometown uh, today. It's also a good discussion. I won't spoil it for uh, for Shannon, who's going to uh, lead it. And then on Wednesday, we'll go into a discussion on privacy. And then Friday, we'll do the uh, the weekly rundown where we discuss uh, just all the things that we've consumed over the week and how we feel about them. Um, so movies, TV shows, things of that nature. Please like, share, subscribe uh, with your friends. And without further ado, I give it to Shannon. All right. So this article is from nextgov.com and it's written by Miriam Bach. I hope I'm saying that right. B-A-K-S-H, Bach. But um, so the title of this is White House Task NIST for Producing Another Cybersecurity Framework, right? So what NIST is, this is the National Institute of Standards and Technology. And uh, what they're going to do now is they're going to work with major tech and insurance companies to create a new framework to help companies build more secure software according to White House release, right? So um. What this really is, right? So I read through this article and I started going through some of the links on it. And this actually goes back, believe it or not, this kind of has roots in the stuff that was brought up back in 2009. Now, where this kind of links up, right, is that the current administration, right, President Biden, remember he was VP back in 2009, right? So this may have been something that was kind of uh, in his wheelhouse uh, for all these years that he thought about, especially now with cybersecurity taking the hit that it does, right? But um, what, what NIST is, though, is this kind of a, it's kind of cyber standards that you go by, especially in the DOD, right? Um, with how you're going to secure your systems when it comes to cyber cybersecurity, what you're going to do, how you're going to do it when it comes to training, when it comes to, uh, you know, setting things up, account management, you know what I mean? Things of that nature. There's a whole litany of things that go into this but uh one of the things one of the things that came up out of this though um was they referenced to um so the biden administration president biden's administration um had a meeting with private sector leaders and he talked about some uh cybersecurity initiatives right and some of the things that came out of this right which were so the NIST thing came out of this right they're going to collaborate with the industry and other partners to develop a new framework right okay we get that but um they also announced a formal expansion of the Industrial Control System Cybersecurity Initiative to a second major sector. And you want to guess what that sector was? Natural gas <laughs> pipelines, right? Sound familiar, right? <laughs> like we, we, we know why that is. That. Right? Yeah, yeah, I remember that, right? That was, that was in the not too distant past, right? Um, but yeah, they, so it's one of those things where um, it doesn't seem like it's really lip service because they are putting money and they are putting action behind the things they've been talking about with cybersecurity, right? Um, Apple, um, they had conversations with them. Uh, Google's another one. Google's investing uh, $10 billion. I want to say it was Microsoft's investing $20 billion, right? This is billion with a B for both of these, right? So over the next five years uh, for both of them, 10 billion and 20 billion over the next five years. And what they're going to try to do is they're going to try to uh, integrate cybersecurity um, uh, into advanced security solutions. So pretty much what that sounds like to me, right? And I'm taking a guess at this, right? Because nothing formal has been laid down is that they're going to start incorporating the security in the beginning, just like we talk about all the time here, right? Don't make it an afterthought. Don't tack it on at the end. This is what you're supposed to do. Think about it in the beginning, right? So that it's not an afterthought to where people are just like, all right, well, now we got to do the security portion of it. Now that we know that everything works, and you kind of got to crunch it together to try to make it uh, do what it needs to do, right? Um, but yes, this is this is one of those things where they talked to all these people, there's going to be money invested into it. And another thing that came up out of this, again, that went back to 2009, was cyber insurance, right? So this cyber insurance, what this is, is uh, these companies that get these government contracts, um, what they're talking about is making sure that they have insurance to protect themselves against uh, these breaches and things like that that have come up, right? Um, which is happening a lot more often, right? Idle hands, work of the devil. Um, now, there's a little dispute here where these companies are like, oh, it's not so much needed. 
and uh, and the government says, well, yes, it is because it leads to things like uh, sharing of information, right? Which is another one of the things that President Biden's administration is trying to do: uh, have these companies share information so we can all learn and grow together and get better together when it comes to protection. Um, but yes, yeah, cyber insurance is something that. Um, even the insurance companies, I think it was back in 2014, I think when I was looking into all this back in 2014, we're looking into this and we're on board. But what's kind of going, where it's kind of going the opposite direction is they had a, a study from 2019 that says that the insurance companies are spending less money to try to do these, these certain types of things. But I think that's going to change, right? Just the direction of how everything is going from 2020 till now. Um, you can't afford to spend less money when it comes to figuring out how you're going to better insure these companies if this is the way we go. So, um, but yeah, there's this, there's a lot more that goes into it and just coming up with a new framework for NIST. Like it involved all those other things that have, again, have gone back to 2009, right? They, they got, uh, they got things they talk about in 2009, 2011, 2014. So this is something that's been ongoing. And again, that was an administration to where president president now president Biden was the VP. So I'm curious if this might've been one of his, one of his, uh, his pet things when he was there that he kind of pushed out there to get, uh, to get to the country and, and, and thought it was serious back then. And now he's in a position to really do something about it. But Levon, I've talked enough now. I've talked enough. Levon, what do you think about this? Man? <laughs> no, you, you gave a great explanation. I mean, that's some, that's some, uh, some good content. And I'm thinking, you know, overall, I think it's obviously a great, uh, great initiative by NIST. I mean, uh, you know, to, to, uh, you know, by the White House as well. I mean, I guess the White House is kind of like initiating and, and then this is kind of like building out the framework. Um, but I think it's great overall. I mean, obviously, only cyber attacks been happening uh, as of late. Um, you know, there's, there's been a need for, I don't know, some formalized like cybersecurity, um, uh, you know, uh, structure that, that can be, you know, kind of provided to these companies that kind of make sure that they are on, on the same page and, and everybody's like, you know, not kind of uh, doing their own thing. And, um, but I think it's, it's great. It's like seeing all these companies invest the money, like you mentioned, Google and Microsoft invest in 10, 10 billion and 20, 20 billion, uh, respectfully, uh, respectively. Um, then um, I saw on here too that um, it looks like IBM and Google are committed to assisting um, with the training and certification of 250,000 people um, over the next three years with forming and planning for, to partner with more than uh, 20 historically black colleges and universities to establish cybersecurity leadership centers to grow a more diverse cyber workforce. So I think that's really awesome that um, um, IBM again, in particular is, is the one that's gonna be kind of focused on these historically black uh, colleges. And the fact that they're, you know, kind of going through that investing the money in, I mean, I guess that's another opportunity for, for you know, for minorities to come up in, uh, in the tech field. Um, and I think, you know, obviously I saw uh, Microsoft is investing 150 million in technical services for, to help federal, state and local governments. So, we're, we're seeing this big initiative on cybersecurity. It's like, we got to like uh, strike while the iron's hot, so to speak. I mean, people out there that, you know, obviously cybersecurity kind of gets uh, kind of tossed by the wayside a little bit, gets forgotten about. And just like you mentioned that's in the opening that it's like the, what people, you know, what, what businesses and, and software developers and things of that nature need to focus on is like build the, uh, like harden the the software and harden the infrastructure before they build, think about like, oh, let's make it as big as possible or just like let's start just putting things together without thinking about security. Um, so I think this is like a great initiative. Hopefully we see, uh, see all these tech companies come together and actually put together their um, the proper proper uh, uh, policies and, and frameworks to make sure that they're staying up, up, to, uh, up to snuff and we kind of reduce some of these uh, cyber incidents that we're seeing as of late. But uh, what you have on this, uh, Ryan, what you think? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so I think you guys covered it pretty thoroughly. Uh, if I were to, uh, you know, if, if I may <laughs> <laughs> uh, jump in the conversation. Um, so uh, I, I think a lot of people ask the question, like, how do I get into cybersecurity? Like, how do I, how do I jump in there? It's a it's hot topic. Compliance. Like, not to say that compliance is easy because it's not, but it, it's definitely an on-ramp into cybersecurity. So if you're looking at, trying to get into this field, which is very hot. And the government is very involved. As you can see, all these companies are very involved. Uh, every week we talk about a pipeline getting hijacked or the water supply getting poisoned or all these things. It all starts with compliance. Like it has to be baked in. Like 
Um, and it's not that it's, it, again, it's not, it's not that compliance is easy. It's just like, you can't jump into an analyst job or you can't be a uh, forensics uh, person or a threat hunter right off the bat, but you can learn about compliance. You can get into compliance um, and then work your way up to whatever you want to do in, uh, in cybersecurity. Uh, and it's, it's pretty much the backbone. That's why I call it, why, that's why these things are frameworks, right? So you have your PCI uh, DSS, you have your, your, your NIST for uh, the, uh, the government, things of that nature. So definitely stay tuned in this. It's not, not exciting per se. <laughs> so I'm not going to tell you, you're going to be excited by these frameworks. But if you're trying to get in, if you're trying to get your foot in the door, this is where the money is currently at. Uh, this is what will get you into um, those positions you might want in the future. So definitely stay tuned to, uh, to compliance. Definitely uh, start, start plugging yourself into NIST and, and all that uh, is involved within it. So I, I'm definitely excited about it. Um, I, and I, I think it, it, it will be the, the, the future, right? So if at least the next three and a half years or whatever is, is left in this administration, plus if it gets another four, cybersecurity will be the focus. And then probably even beyond because you have those people out there who are just uh tearing up our infrastructure um because it's it's not in compliance it's it's uh it's outdated and things of that nature so it, the field is definitely growing and, and, and booming in that regard so uh, I'm, I'm definitely excited that's all i got <laughs> no it's good and 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 levon you actually touched on like i i felt like i was talking too much so i was like let me come back to some of the stuff but you touched on it like with the hbcus and there's a there was another one it was girls who code was another mm. one that was talking about getting in on it as well right yeah. that's another underrepresented uh community you know what i mean when it comes to IT, right. cyber security and they, and they have so, a big presence on uh clubhouse clubhouse and twitter I see, I see them on there a lot okay there you go but yeah they they talked about getting in on this as well and and, and doing some stuff uh let me actually let me get the specifics of it of what they said they're going to do hold on i don't want to just say oh they're going to do some stuff because i because <laughs> I, I, I thought the name was cool i was like girls who code okay uh they'll establish a micro micro credentialing program for historically excluded groups and technology so they're not even doing it for just girls it looks like like it's it's historically excluded groups and technology so it doesn't say specifically you know female male or anything like that but good for them though for for getting out there and jumping in front and jumping on this as well yeah definitely so uh another good conversation uh thank you levon thank you uh shannon it's always it's always good talk uh, thank you for listening. Uh, please continue to, to tune in. I was going to do this at the last episode, but uh, if you're if you listen to Monday and now you're listening to uh, uh, Tuesday's episode, uh, we're near 100. So we did 92 last week. So this week we'll we'll hit 96. So we're almost at 100 episodes. So I didn't do this on purpose. Like the timing just worked out uh, just right. So next week will literally end on episode 100 so uh please continue to like share subscribe please continue to, to uh check out our social medias which you can access through www.theothersideofthefirewall.com uh you can hit us up personally i am at ry ry security guy that's ry ry security guy i'm on clubhouse twitter tiktok and linkedin and you levon hit me up on the twitters at levon maynard there it is so continue to stay safe stay secure take care Thank you.